you poking at him. Uh, hey, man, how do, I, I, how do I get into something? How do I do something? I don't know. I think it was, I think as I just kind of got older, we just kind of took the different steps, you know, like. Like, how does that, how did y'all have that first conversation of, do you want to do this? Do you want to try this? I asked him. Yeah? Yeah. How I remember. Go? I remember asking him. I remember we had multiple conversations whenever we would, you know, about get ready to run a new car. You know, he, he would always ask me, are you, are you sure you want to do this? You know, are you sure you want to race? I don't want to push you in anything. And, you know, I always said yes, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was, I think that was your idea of like, yeah, like now it's time for a legend car. Now it's time for late models and you know, things what, like that. So. What's, uh, you ran, you're talking about running a lot of different stuff and a lot of different cars. Which one do you miss the most? Oh, man, I love the quarter midget stuff. Uh, that was, that was so much fun, all the different classes. A uh, lot of lot of talented kids in the quarter midgets. The Red Sox are going for their third so win in a row. Uh, Hi and welcome, and welcome everybody. Right, this is Dwayne Kuyper and Mike Kruko here for MVP be, Baseball. Tonight's American League game is between the Anaheim Angels and the Boston Red Sox. 800? Yeah. 800? But there's, you know, there's <laughs> 10 different classes. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. But there still might be 100 in your class and 10 in your class. Yeah, I like it. We went, we I've never drove one. You were a late model stock mm -hmm. guy? Yeah. I love the super late model stuff. We never did late model stocks. Um, we were in that past series, and it was a really good series that ran, you know, in North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and uh, Virginia. And, um, you know, it was a pretty solid, with a lot of good competition in it. And, uh, we ran that for many years, I think. And, um, I miss those cars. They went some really great right racetracks. Right In sports, if you think joy edge, only happens strike. after you win, think again. Look at the world's most successful athletes. Three, they spend right all their days grinding away. The they take time to enjoy themselves, like having Piccolo Ultra with friends, out, because yeah. they know that happiness is the key to winning. And joy is the whole game, not just the end game. Piccolo Ultra. 95 calories, 2.6 grams of carbs. It's only it worth it line. if you enjoy it. How did you help him in and his career? Out? I mean, we talked about how you've so, you know, you, you coached him a little bit. But how are you, what were you doing to create these opportunities for him? Well, and I could create some, right, as far as I could afford to race like some. And, and the super late model thing um, we could do, and the only reason, I don't remember how it came about, but I think late model stock, Maybe had to be 18 to run a NASCAR right event. Uh, in the Super, you could be 14. We at 14, we could take him and run against the best guys in the country anywhere. And um, so that looked like the way to do it. But who are some of the people that were helping you? Well, past the Super Late model, so we we decided to get a K&N car, and we had. Uh, friends of ours from Ohio, Jim Weller, and his well, son raced right Super Late Models as well up in Ohio, Pennsylvania. So we decided to go in on a K&N car. Both of them are going to drive. Ryan's going to drive a little bit. Jimmy's going to drive a little bit. So that kind of morphed into the next year. Jimmy had his own team, and um, we kind of had our own, but we could only do four or five races. And then we got help. And he, and he won one of those four or five at Phoenix in our own car. Yeah. A can and car. Yeah, we'd only run for a the bigger tracks. Yeah. You know, we wouldn't go run the short tracks. Where's that car sitting in, when you're during the time you're racing? Like, where is this car sitting? Is that the shop? House? Yeah. Y'all yeah. yeah. did it all right there. Well, we take it. It was an old Turner car. Trent Owen. Yeah, he uh, yeah. chiefed it. Yeah, he's yeah. so yeah. a we take it. We take it to Turner and put on scales and stuff. Like that. I tried to hire Trent one time. He wouldn't come work here. He's good. He's a good, really good guy. Awesome. Ball. And, uh, well, this then uh, good we had the – so usually things kept getting better. You win in a K&N race. They went out in Phoenix. I got an Arca. I went – actually paid Billy Venturini to put him in an Arca car. And, and Billy – I think Billy approached me about it. He'd seen him run and one that said, you should think about it. Okay. We went to Winchester. That was my first one. Winchester, a new track record, crazy, crazy fast. He was – I led like – I think it was 250 lap race. I led like 230, and we blew a right front tire. <laughs> but I just I remember the practice day that I went to. Yeah. And Billy, they'd run so much. They're like, okay, here's what we should start at for race speeds, and here if we do a mock-up run, here's what we should run. So your first laps on the track were way below the mock-up run speed. He was thinking you'd run. So I'm like, 
stop him before it gets out of hand here. Yeah. And, uh, fast. Man, the archery stuff, with the slider. that takes me off, man, because I ran like, well, we ran some races for Billy. Yeah. Uh, we ran Winchester, we ran higher P one year with him, yeah. And Jonathan Davis was crew chief. <laughs> No kidding. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God. Wait, Jonathan Davis. Jonathan Hired Jonathan Davis. Davis. In the yeah. shop. Yeah. Oh yeah. He was crew chief. So you were on your own, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's why we lost the race. Uh, for sure. Turn the speakers on. Out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think those are the only two we ran for venturing, and then I ran for Cunningham a little bit the next year because we were with got with Penske, or maybe it was a couple years after that we ran for Cunningham. But I ran like seven Arca races and 0 for seven, and but should have won six of them. So that kind of makes me mad. Yeah. We never won. Well, it's funny we, too. I mean, you, you just won your, you just won Atlanta in a cup car, and you, <laughs> you like can't let go of those. Yeah, you just the can't. Ones you, the ones oh, you lose. Man, no. you just, the yeah. they're, they're probably worse than you enjoy the the ones you win. Yeah, and like dominating these arca races, yeah. just something stupid happens. I blame Jonathan for one. <laughs> That's so. a good place to place. That's good. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm curious Second though, Ryan. At what point did you think you could make a career out of it? And I'm wondering if you had a moment where you thought he had the it factor. I don't know. You know, I definitely wasn't early. Like, you know, as a, as a teenager, you know, 14, 14 run late models, you don't know, think that. You're just trying to do the best you can. And I, I probably didn't think I could make a career out of it until, you know, but really we started running good, like ran in the ARC stuff and the K&M stuff. You know, running the NASCAR tracks that the Cup guys run on, running pretty good. I was like, man, we're running good. And then when... No, I got with Penske. I was this like, wow, you must be doing something halfway mound. right. And, but then still, you, you got to keep running well, right? Uh, no, of just, course. But like, it's some, like, I remember when Dale Jr., like, even at DEI, the they didn't even give him the opportunity to, to run that 98, the, the year that he won the, the, the championship. I don't think you knew that you were in that car until like a week before. And so, <laughs> well, you walked in the shop and they had and saw his name. Cars. I mean, like, right? so, yeah. so, like, he certainly at that point wasn't making, wasn't thinking about a career. I mean, like, so obviously you've got to make it, but you're saying at this point when you get the Penske ride, like, okay, maybe this really can happen. When did you think that he had the potential to make it happen? It was way before that. Was it? I can tell you the night. Okay, let's hear it. <laughs> it was at Orange County. Oh, my. And our super ASA start. Uh, your first super late model. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was 14. Yeah. He looked 10. Tiny. He looked, he looked, that's the first race we'd run. We tested a lot. Had Robert Hampton and Robbie working on it. And we had good, good stuff. Good guys. And we tested... At Orange Hickory County, Hickory, and, Hickory, and we'd run really good. So we show up, shows up, qualifies in the middle of the field. And I remember driver introductions. I was standing around with him. Other drivers are looking at me like I'm a criminal. Got this little 10-year-old looking kid in this car. Like, what are you doing? The dad of the year. <laughs> and um, they throw on the top of my trailer. Um, Kyle Bush has got his late model team there. His dad, Tom, came over and stood on top of my trailer. We were standing on top of my trailer. And he goes from about 14th, 16th to 4th in about 40 laps at Orange County. Up the hill, driving under him, around him. I'm, yeah. you know, like, we're standing there like, is Kyle Bush driving this car? Hey, that's a great and he's 14, first drive. race. I mean, I knew right the there. Balls and baseball he judge. had it. You don't know if it's going to get you there. But right. Hold right right. That was the night. That battery trouble. They didn't even finish. Right no, third. I thought we run third. That 40 laps was enough for me. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's the, um, the one race that I remember, and probably the first time I saw Ryan track. race, was at Richmond in yeah. uh, the, what, uh, 2012. 2012. And Tommy Baldwin's car. Tommy Baldwin's car. Yeah. So Tommy had a Bush car. Right. And uh, in, a lot of respect to Tommy, DeRazzo. but his cars you know, weren't, weren't exactly front-running race cars. And you drove the car – and in the top ten. This guy has yeah, we ended up running seventh that night. And I think often. I remember talking to you a little bit and just briefly getting a sense Get of over sort of the urgency of of where he was in his career. And it was, uh, I got the impression that that was, well, that was that y'all worked really hard to put just that little deal together and didn't know what was going to happen next. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, we had good friends in um, well, the SEAL rap came on, Jeff Welch, Kurt Wilson, yep. out of Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. So Ryan raced a late model and uh, started helping a little bit. And then he, he ran really good in the ARCA car. And then they then they had the ARCA car at IRP. It yeah, was a full seal wrap car. Yep. So between those guys and me and a couple other friends, we put enough money together to run five. That was a purpose pitch. Which was races. How, did you know, how did you know Tommy? Oh, uh, I knew Tommy. Well, 
Yeah, but I met him at Bill Davis's. I guess when I first showed up, he was at Bill. He was? And yeah, I, I don't. I knew of him before that. I knew his dad ran modifiers, but I don't think I'd ever met him until I got there. So how did the conversation start? Well, we were just looking. We, we got some. We got some money raised to go get it. So I actually called Gil Martin at RCR and, and bought a car from him. I said, "This is the best car." Is my Gil was my first crew chief in, in the bush. Yep. I might the the best car you can let go. For Ryan, he put that pitch right so we ran an engine over the there. We got one car, one engine, and, uh, and Tommy agreed to, to take care of it, up. bring it to the track, do the hey, whole thing. One, so show up and uh, run. In the long run, he was so really fast, fast that night. He, I think he could have won if it yeah. played out right. But yeah. um, but really, I think he raced back then. I know Brad was racing, Hammond was racing, Casey Kane was racing, everybody was oh, racing. Right? Yeah, was yeah. Full and, um, field. I don't know if you'll explain it this way, but I, he got hired by Penske after that race. Really? Mm. Mm. One, his first Bush race. So wait, wait, wait. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, One go ahead, Dale. <laughs> so you run. I remember that. Night. You run the race, and you win. What do you mean that night? Well, they started talking to you after that. Yeah. At um, the track, or no, call no. you up on the phone, or no? No, we. Uh, How old are you, Ryan? I'm 27. Then. So then, 2012, I was. This is what the school comes in, 19? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was 19 when we made those starts. And they're calling you? I did not. I don't remember if I got a call. Like, RP didn't, didn't call me. Right. Um, well, I think it did. was Tim Sendrick or Mike Nelson. I had talked they to Mike Nelson before that about it. Because at that point, they had Parker Klingerman, and they might have had a couple other guys doing some testing and a little bit of running. Yeah. So I, I talked to those guys about considering it. Mm -hmm. And, and told the them what you'd done, and, but then after that race, after they got two, back the with me. Yeah. And, um, and I know Kentucky was the next race you ran. Yeah, we ran. And, no, we ran. Uh, we oh, ran yeah. Darlington, <laughs> and I wrecked about lap one path. and a half. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I was like, oh my god, my career's over. <laughs> done. For real. Hero one week, and then I can't show my face anymore. For real, like that's exactly the way you're feeling. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like, cause there was all the oh, yeah. oh man, I'm so good. Ran seven. You know, so good. Oh, we're going to Darlington. It's nothing. Whose car yeah. was that? That was the same car. <laughs> okay. K killed it. <laughs> that was the end of that. Did game. the tank slapper off too and destroyed and the fence and uh, lap lap one and a half. I was like, well, I'm done. This is fun, and I'm going to go back right on late models. And then, but we still had some more starts. You know, and I was just mad we, we wrecked that car because it was a, it was a really good car. And then, yeah, I think the next one was Kentucky, and we ran seventh there too. We ran 7th or 8th at Kentucky. Yeah, the but the thing I remember about it was them telling you they were going to do it. Yeah. Well, I, I remember talking to Brad after that race that Brad was running, too. And, uh, I had I had dinner with Brad and, uh, and uh, the guy who was running his truck team at the time, uh, Wayne Setterington, that week. And, you know, Park Clinton was driving for him with their truck and Penske's Xfinity car. And I guess it wasn't working out you know, the way they wanted to, and they were kind of looking for a driver and just... You know, got really fortunate it lined up and the timing was great. So Brad was a big part of getting me in there too. You know, talking to Brad and then I'm, I'm saying Brad probably Inside pushed the whole yeah. thing. I'm certain Brad was the main part of him getting the shot. Mm -hmm. Wow, but now that's interesting. Yeah. You know, um, still a teammate. It cool. with his yeah, mm -hmm. it is cool. You yeah. guys, uh, did you know Brad pretty well? Dirksen or are you meeting these guys sort of for the first time? Well, the first time I talked to Brad was after that Kentucky race. He came up to me it's walking back to the pits. The reason I ask is Brad always has some unique first impression on people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you, I, never, you never know which way it's going to go. Like I, got a, I got a good first impression of him. What um, was it? It was during the days that we did the tandem draft in the Talladega. So I was in Baldwin's car. He calls me during the week. So when you talk about running together, I think you want to run together with me for it. And, um, <laughs> so we show up at Talladega. He called me. Hey, come over to my motorhome.
and he's got all these all this film ready of guys drafting and pushing and situations. I'm like, holy <laughs> f- this guy is on it. <laughs> it is unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. yeah. And then during the race, we, we did it all day, he and I think we finished third and fourth. Going, and they, um, they were in the middle of the chase, and it was, it was a big day for, for Brad and the team uh, to finish, you know, finish a race at Tower Dagan and finish good. So it was incredible. He, he was really good during the race. Was perfect. It was it was the coolest experience the whole weekend. Do you remember where when they had the we had the red flag at Daytona on the back straightaway and yes. everybody got out of their car? And he puts it away for the He's out. leading the race. I think you were driving Tommy's car. Do you remember that? I remember all of it. Um, did you think Guerrero. you might end up winning that race? Well, half of me didn't want any part of it and half of me did. Okay. Why? Ah, you just don't want to win them that way? No. You'd be the biggest asterisk in NASCAR history. Well, <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like you'd, <laughs> you'd learn to live with it. <laughs> I mean, it's, there wasn't another cut. There wasn't another driver in the field, Ryan, that wanted Going to get back the in their cars. The fourth, the score yeah, is and that, one yeah everybody wanted Dave to win that race. I, yeah. I've told you before, he, he wouldn't leave my car. Yeah. yeah, he wanted to see what happened if I won. Yeah. I remember. Being I remember. There. Yeah. Well, you guys ran that race on a Monday. Sometimes right, you try to make a hit and change. I, remember, right. I think it was a Monday night. It was. It was. What, what yeah. year is this? July. 2012. The, I think it was when Juan crashed in turn three in the fire. Yeah. I think that was 2012. The, yeah. I remember, I remember because I was there all week and during speed weeks, <laughs> all that stuff. And it gets rained out, and I got to go to school you know, on Monday. So I'm sitting at the house pissed off oh, under this red flag. So I'm like, I'm there all week. <laughs> <laughs> dad's going to win this race, and yeah. they're not going to be there. So, but it was not happening. But I was like, it didn't work all week. I won the race at the Portico, so I was good. Yeah. <laughs> it's all coming back to me. Now. That's right. So Juan hits that. Was that the 500 or was that the summer race? Because I thought that 500. was, that was always, 500. That was the 500? 500. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not changing my story. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go with it. 500. Go with it, right? No, but it was. Yeah, Juan hits the uh, jet dryer, big explosion. You guys are parked for how long? Like an hour? We got out. Couple Everybody's hours? standing around talking. You you and Brad make the race to the Port of John. Race to Port of John. Took, Brad took his famous got self a, or a picture play. from inside the car. And the got phone, got, got phones banned from, from, from race cars. There's a lot happening in that. <laughs> that was a big night. Yeah. yeah. I didn't realize Dave was winning, though. He was leading the race? Man. We had gotten damaged, and everybody had... The caution to come out everybody pitted but we just stayed out because we were going to take a little bit to fix the damage so by staying out then it happened and we're, we, we were on our way to pit road but we ended up in the front the yeah. so the i would have learned a little bit i would have been i know i wouldn't have worried <laughs> they told about it they still got to etch your name on that trophy uh, you still it would have been funny you'd, you'd have had to give up that car for, uh, for a year and uh <laughs> With the damage and all, it'd have been nice. Yeah. It'd been nice. You co-own uh, Sharon one. Speedway. Yeah. What is what is co-owning the racetrack like? It is our home track. I grew up two, three miles from it, uh-huh. so it's always been part of. On the ground. Um, my dad didn't race there full time. At the time, it was a pavement track. Maybe from the, all the 70s, it was a pavement track. So we drove past it every week to go race at the dirt track. <laughs> But um, it got to the point down. where it, it had been a dirt track for a, a quite a while, and uh, some friends, Jim Jim Weller and uh, the Cirilla family, went in and bought it, and uh, it's been an experience. We've had it for 20 years. It's been a long time. <laughs> so who, mess, who messes with that? We've got a, uh, Dave Willoughby and his wife uh, take care of it day to day up there. It's, um, How far you get up there much? No, I'll go race up there up yeah. this summer several times, but as far as going to handle anything, one, you know, two, my wife Lisa does it over. all the financial the side the fifth, of it, along with everybody. Only one run. Uh, it's okay. It's, it's a the good racetrack. Um, it's not on the scale of Eldora as far as size, you know, facility size. It's kind of smaller, but the track is nice. The race is nice. It's, it's good. It's just interesting to me because it's something you probably just wouldn't have to do. Like it's not a money-making business, I imagine. No. And but you do it just cause, yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> racing. <laughs> it's it's racing. Yeah. No, well, when, it, when we bought it, it was a big half mile, and we thought the racing would be way better if it was smaller, so we immediately shrunk it. And um, and my, my dad, his whole life, had a had a sawmill lumber yard with what he worked, and that that was kind of phasing out, so he dove right into the racetrack side of it. And he and my brother changing the part of changing it all over. So, you've done this, uh, I think, I think about um. 
a lot of the dads and sons that are going to Mill Bridge every week and doing that and across the country, really. And you've did that with Ryan. Ryan's successful. He's made it. He worked hard to get there, but you were definitely a big influence on that. What's the what's the best advice and maybe what are some of the some of the mistakes uh, that can be made when you're trying to support your son and help him sort of get through uh, his teenage years and make it in racing? I don't know. Yeah? I don't know. It's weird. Um, I, I know a bunch of dads back then, used, they'd have a plan. Like, right? you, just, you can't have a plan. No plan. You can't, just got to let the kid do what he wants to do, follow his lead. Maybe if he wants to race more, okay, let's race more. But don't say, hey, we're going to race this many times. So kind of follow their lead. Everybody does it different. I'm sure it works both ways as far as patting them on the back after every time they get out of the car. And great job, great job. Well, I wasn't that way so much. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that makes you uncommon, actually. I, I don't see a whole lot of back, of back patting going on <laughs> these days. Um, yeah. I, you know, I, I look at the, the – you're right. The There's a lot of drivers out there that are – got their kids running these things. They look like they're two or three years old. And they're out there running these, uh, you know, go-karts and midgets and whatnot. What but um, – Feels like they may be a little hard on him already. Yeah. I don't know. It feels like. Well, were you eight or nine when we started? I was nine. Nine. And I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it any earlier. There's tons of them out there so early. The and they can't side. even really comprehend what they need to do. So how, you can't teach them. So they're not gaining anything from it except maybe a bad experience. So. So be pa you can be patient. Yeah. Yeah. yeah don't rush out there right in terms of the age limit to do it. He's not too impressed, not, but he hasn't crossed ready, but the line just he wasn't yet. Ready. It's not going to create an <laughs> advantage. The dugout pretty pleased that he argued that call without so. getting ejected. What about the speed ticket? Which one? Do you, oh. Which one? Oh, well, the, oh, the bad one that I, that I talked about? Yeah. You, you brought night. it up on t in 2019. Your dad didn't know about it? It's a foul ball. Did you know about the speeding ticket no. I got in your car? <laughs> I heard about it when you were on here. <laughs> okay. I, I knew it. I knew you didn't know about it. <laughs> But do I want to tell the story again? Yeah, sure. Okay. Well, I forget what year it was. We were on late models, and, uh, so it had to have been 2010, maybe. I was 18. So, yeah, 2010, 2011, we were running that uh, Caraway. We running a race, CRA race, that Southern six-pack deal. And, like, Ross Kendrick was there, Matt Sun, Jeff Foltz was running. Um, we led that whole race. They shortened it because uh, we were a time limit or something, so they shortened the race, but we already restricted the motor down. We were in a Super 8 model for a, a long right race, 150 lap race. I think it only ended up being 100. So we didn't have as much power as we probably needed to for a short race like that. And, but we're leading the whole thing. He's setting this up big time. I know, I can see an yeah. excuse coming this is, here. This is <laughs> getting, <laughs> get, got to restart. <laughs> anyway, Ross Kendrick punts me into one, and we both go up the track. <laughs> Jeff so, Holtz passed the bolt. Speed somewhere, ticket somewhere, somewhere there's a speeding that. ticket in this story. I'm just setting up why I got the speeding <laughs> ticket because this all was the reason I got the speeding ticket. I'm st Ross Kendrick should have paid for that speeding ticket. <laughs> set me in the lawn, and he's out the track too, so we both don't even win the race. Anyway, I'm taking my little sister to gymnastics the next day. I'm driving your car, and uh, I drop her off, and I just was thinking about that race. <laughs> okay. I, was, I was so pissed off. I was like, man, we had one. Yes, so, I mean, I'm wide open in your car going down this road. And I, we crest the hill, and a cop passes me. We make eye contact, and like, <laughs> like, so I was stopped by the time he, like, turned around. I was just stopped. <laughs> Window was down. <laughs> I might have had my ID, like, already out there. So, and he don't, came. Don't drive angry. That's in a movie, I think. Somewhere. I know. Yeah. Uh, but that one was bad. <laughs> Mom was furious. That is bad I think. Mom, would have mom known. did you saw mom, <laughs> yeah. mom knew. Mom knew. You probably. Mom thought, and I was scared too, that like dad would not let me race for a while. Really? Because it was, it was like it was. It was like ninety and a like forty. It was like, ninety-three and a forty-five. Yeah. And uh, so that was a bad one. And mom was put the fear of mom in me, and uh, I haven't had one. Really since. I, I got my. The one I've gotten after that was like last year. And it was you got one last year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got one headed back. Uh, we were in Richmond, and we were racing a dirt track over there. And I was going to the racetrack, and I didn't see the speed limit drop real fast, and it kind of tagged me like a few miles away from the track. So you mentioned you're being angry a day later, and I see like you have that first, you have that trait of like getting mad. Like, Sometimes nothing like it doesn't matter. I, I just know that you have this sort of party where it's different. 
than most people, at least most drivers. I want to. I want to know. It explain. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, he just gets mad, like yeah. really, really mad, angry. He's got anger issues. Well, I mean, he doesn't. Example. Make, I want an example. Like what, me, we're pretty good pals. Yeah. But if if I race you hard or something, you were. Oh, you, I'm not as pal anymore. You like, did, in that moment. You did have a moment or two, didn't you, Martinsville? Yeah. Oh yes, we did. We wrecked. He wrecked yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Somebody was uninvited to drink beers afterwards. I don't remember That's the details. But like, I just know, having been around you and spent time with you and listened to you, uh, and you telling that story right there, like yeah. you will, you'll get mad at something, and it burns inside of you. So it does. Do you? He do you, he doesn't get it from his mother. So is that your? Is that you? <laughs> like y'all, like yeah. y'all don't outwardly, y'all don't, you'd never know it until you compete with, like I competed with you, and that, and that's where I saw it. Like I'd never yeah. see it, it, you'd never see it in conversation or hanging out. You don't get upset at somebody and then fight them in a bar. Mm -hmm. But when you get behind it's the wheel of a race field. car, this, this, when you get frustrated, it's like a level Makes mm -hmm. the that's pretty high. The and actually, believe it or not, that's actually gotten better. Over the years, has it? They used well, to be bad at it, and now it's it's, it's gotten better over the yeah. years. Well, Dale retired. He left the sport. You didn't have anybody to be <laughs> so angry about <laughs> I remember when I spun you out. Yeah, I think accidentally. We banged. <laughs> yeah, I was at, still outside, and he put me in the fence. And then I didn't even mean to spin you out. It was like a weird kind of thing, and it turned you around. And tell you what, leaving the track that night, it was <laughs> pretty Whatever. funny. It was pretty funny. No, like just fans oh, no. and stuff well, I like didn't that. Say anything to you? Was that? They no, were, you didn't say nothing. No, no did the, the fans? fans did the fans? They, yeah, <laughs> probably, they were nice. <laughs> no, they were not nice. What did they say to you? Oh, they were like, "Oh, spin junior out you." Watch the shortstop. <laughs> Walking back to my bus, I was like, I had one guy be like, "Watch out for me on Twitter tonight." <laughs> he said that to me. Oh, it was funny. Yeah. We're going to get you on Twitter. Yeah. I was like, you're right that, here. Say what you got to say yeah. right here. That'll learn him. That'll get him. He ain't going to do that. So that personality trait is you. You've had. You've always kind of been that way. What a shot. I never knew that. It's short. <laughs> I, see, like, he's rounding well, first. Go ahead. Same thing. He gets showed, better with age. But. Yeah, okay. I must have, when I ran across you, it was, <laughs> it was way better. <laughs> I got to be honest. I, like, uh, I'm learning so much about Ryan right now that I had no idea about it. And now, he always came across as really self-critical. I, I, I think he, if I would have always, I would have believed that he gets mad at himself a lot. I remember after Indy in the bush race. You thought you had, you felt like you should have won that race. That was bad. Yeah, you were yeah. so mad at yourself. What happened? Yeah. It was 20, 2015? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 2015 at Indy, we were running the Xfinity race, and Kyle Busch was best car all day, and we beat him on a restart, like 20 to go. Kind of gapping him a little bit, but he was staying pretty close, and I come off two on, white, on the last lap and just missed it, missed turn two. And uh, he ended up passing me and lost the race, so that was, that was bad. That was a rough one for sure. Uh, how many times are you going to have a chance to win a race at Indy for Roger Penske Roger, and, yeah, and yeah. lose it like that? That was pretty bad. I, guess, yeah. I thought I was going to get fired. It's an RBI triple. Yeah. How many times have you thought you were going to get fired? <laughs> this this well, is the second time it's come up in this drama. Mr. Penske, uh, I was running the cup race for the Wood Brothers that year. Yeah. Um, that was part-time in 15. And he had his – Roger had his bus there. He called me in Sunday morning. I was like, here it is. <laughs> here it comes, man. And uh, he was – Gave me some good words. You're Stop almost boy. fired. <laughs> in my mind, <laughs> in my mind, I was like, "Oh my god! Oh my gosh, man! This is it! This guy's probably not even going to win this cup race today." <laughs> and uh, no, he was very nice. Yeah. Yeah. How do you handle the, the, those races where he's done that? Uh, you know, he's made a mistake. He lost, you know, a race at Indy could have been great. What's the first thing that, uh, you, as the father, saying to him? Are you trying to pick him back up, or are you going like, "What were you thinking?" I didn't say anything. Really? I don't say anything until the next day, maybe. Well, okay, but yeah. the next day. I'm saying, what's the next thing you say to him? I can't say anything. The um, only thing I used to get upset was not if I didn't feel like he was trying hard enough. 
Oh, yeah, that, that's a good one for that. That was the biggest thing. And then, the purpose of and this then it was just correcting mistakes. And, okay, more time to get you're ready. still doing it. Yeah. So, but but something like that, just to Sometimes missing it going forward. Do nothing but gets racing, racing, you thinking can't, too yeah. much. You can't get upset that. Means trouble. Effort. That, that's one, like, yeah. looking at your kids, even today, it's like uh, I'm looking at my daughters, and I'm like, God, the you weren't even trying out there. And it's like, I'm just going to get the mail back. You know, whatever it is. And it's like, no, do it better. Harder go. Run. Look at anybody in any top sport, the guys that get after the artists. They, right. They, uh, they rise to the top. So, Ryan, um, your Advance Auto Parts has been a big supporter of yours over the years. Yep. And uh, they got this ad, uh, Advance My Track Challenge mm -hmm. um, coming up on the dirt two. race at Bristol. It's definitely got a short right track feel to it. Tell us about the right uh, Advance My Track Challenge. What is that? Yeah, so well, Advance Auto Parts got with us last hey, year. And uh, it's great and that to have them in the sport. You know, it's, it's a great company and um, you know, getting to know everybody. So. They're on my car at Bristol this weekend uh, for the dirt race, so that's that's pretty good. But yeah, they're doing the Advance My Track Challenge. Uh, they do a lot with short tracks right now, um, and with the weekly series they call it. So the challenge is they got 22 um, tracks across the U.S. and Canada uh, that are participating uh, in the Advance My Track Challenge, and voting's already open. It's actually started today, March 23rd. So by the time this comes out, it already starts. So uh, you can vote at advancemytrack.com. And what you do is they'll have all these 22 tracks and the voting will go on here till May 9th. And um, the top six tracks will receive a, a final two day voting that goes on May 9th and 10th. And so the winner will get 50 grand uh, to, you know, to, for the facility. Uh, to you know, enhance kind of all the fan experience. Um, second gets 15,000, third gets 10,000. Um, so that's what they want to do. You know, short tracks is obviously we've been sitting around talking about how we grew up racing and stuff like that. And, um, you know, they, they've, doing, they've done a great job, Advance has, of, you know, really trying to help out, yeah. you know, where everyone kind of comes from. And, you know, I've raced at a lot of these tracks before, you know, Wake County and, South Boston, Berlin, up in Michigan. There, uh, there are a lot of great tracks on uh, on the Runners list. So, the yeah, if you're a fan, go out and right vote because it's really going to help these tracks out. On your race car each weekend, uh, instead of Advance's logo on the seat post, they're going to have uh, one of the different tracks represented. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so they do it on both the left and the right seat post. It's two different tracks. So that's that's cool. You know, that just shows how much they care about these short tracks. Each track featured on your car each uh, will receive 1200 bucks. Mm -hmm. um, where do you go to vote? So you go to advancemytrack.com. Advancemytrack.com. Mm -hmm. right like the the vote is already open by the time this comes out. So. This is pretty key because you guys know this the really well. Way back in the 70s and the, the, the 80s and Dempster. through the 90s, the Winston support through NASCAR all fed and all the way down to the bottom in the short track ranks and, and all these tracks were NASCAR sanctioned and, and Winston had them paint the walls and everything just looked really cool and there was a great connection and bond between the local track and, and the big series. Here's the pitch. And uh, I think Advance is sort of filling that gap now it on the uh, with programs like this. So big props to Advance Auto Parts uh, for, for doing so much for short track racing and the local short track racing. 50 grand, by the way. I mean, as a racetrack owner, that goes a long way, doesn't yeah. it? Gigantic. Yeah. Gigantic. That's, a, that's a game changer right there. Yeah. So. I know they're they're on uh, Tony Stewart's sprint car at the moment. I've seen it this year. So, mm -hmm. yeah, all about that world, which is, uh, that, that's got to be their pretty big customer base as well. Yeah, we won the uh, national championship for the Late Mile Stock and West <coughs> Racing Series is what it used to be called. But now it's the Advanced Auto Parts <laughs> Short Track Series, and we're very, very proud of it. Amazing trophy. And the count yeah, and, is and I know Advance has to pay for it. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so that makes them special. And I'll tell you what, and and they were so nice. They We, we win the trophy, and we it's bring it here, and I wanted to get a second one Sometimes made to, to give to our, one of our sponsors, exactly and they, our right two sponsors, and they pay for that. It's hit over oh, is that right? Yeah, good folks. You know, when we were doing Lost Speedways last year, the it really kind of brought up the fact right, that people really the have, not only just have connections to their Lost, uh, yeah, to their Speedways, to their local tracks, but it's personal, like it's a personal relationship. That's the part we didn't really know until we did that show. And so when you give people an opportunity to show that that meaningful, that, 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 uh, that relationship like this, like going out and voting, I mean, if you can get your track $50,000, I think they're going to come out of the woodwork. I mean, this is when people really get to show uh, what, what's important. And so I love this. I love this program. It's awesome. Oh, we're, we're lucky to have them for sure. And, and them showing 
uh, coming on board uh, to do a handful of primaries last year, uh, continuing through this year, just shows you know a, a pretty much a, a new company coming in the sport that hasn't been in the sport at least in a while. So Advance and CarQuest, are, Advance owns CarQuest too. So I know CarQuest was were they at Hendrick for a little bit? Mm, yeah, I think so. Um, but I don't think Advance was part of that yet. So just to have them, you know, you talk about new companies coming into the sport. And then not only being on a car, but doing what they're doing now with the weekly series. It's, uh, it's really cool to see. Well, man, coming off your uh, win in Atlanta, I know you got an unknown, a complete unknown at Bristol. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be sitting up in a suite watching this. Yeah. So. What? Yeah, sorry. Should have kept that to myself. Um, <laughs> I got a big question, though. So I know that. We, you know, you don't know what setup to put in the car. You don't know whether you, you know, you're going to how to drive the car and all the things. You're going to learn all that really quickly. But you know this, 250 laps in a dirt race. I mean, this thing, that's going to be hard. It feels long. It's, dirt races aren't long races, typically. Um, what's the longest dirt race you ever Maybe 200 laps. So what car was that? Exactly it would have been right a, what they call a big block modified or maybe even a silver crown car. You know, 150. But yeah, this is going to be wild. So I ran, I mean, I've, I've ran, I've ran uh, a 10 lap like match race on dirt. The and it felt like I'd run 200 laps. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> what'd you, what'd, what car did you have? It was a, uh, one of them four cylinder modified. Okay. Like Kenny Wallace. I don't know if it's four cylinder. Um, Were you hanging on a little too tight, or I mean, what got you so tired? Uh, I think I held my breath <laughs> exactly yeah. the whole time. They needed the D to not breathe. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that that's going to be the biggest. The I, you know, you guys can can tell me your opinion, but I think that's going to be the biggest shock to everybody is just how physical this race is going to be. I think so. Um, no, granted. So the when the dirt late models were there last week, you know, they were running mid fifteen second laps. I think we'll be in the 20, 21 bases. second. You know, probably. Um, and the track got really rough, you know. Uh, um, it won't get as rough, I don't think, because we're not going as fast through the corners. Those cars tear up a lot of, you know, of the dirt. But I'm just curious to see, and no one knows this, how the track is going to change. You know, how they're going to start the track for us. They can't start it with a lot of moisture on it because, you know, we have windshields, things like that. True. You can't cake up windshield so two just to see how much the track changes over one. that over the weekend and over the whole race you know i think that's just stepping in you know, there's another three. thing that's up in here that, no one knows. that does present so. a challenge that you guys have windshields you won't be able to have you know you're not going to be tearing off tear offs from your visor so what are some of the are there anything that y'all are conversating about as far as preventative uh Maintenance to keep the two. windshield from becoming you know, impossible. Yeah. Yeah. So we get a little like uh, a little screen, like a and plexiglass a screen on the hood. Gone. I think All right. to deflect it like the trucks used to. How do. much does that really do to deflect? I don't think it does that much. Because those have been, I used to, you know, you see them on Arca cars way oh, back. Man. I mean, as long yeah. Arca's run dirt for years, decades. And even cup cars, even Richard Petty and them guys, when they would run dirt, they'd have something on the winch on the hood. And I'm like, what is that really doing? Yeah. Is it actually moving that much air out of the wind, out of the path of the windshield? I'm not sure. Uh, we ran them in the trucks at Eldora, but it was never the track was never you know tacky enough to yeah. really like sling dirt. When we when you were racing somebody, like it'd start off a little a little tacky in practice. But. Did you ever have a race at Eldora in the truck where the windshield was so far, the bad? So it, that, got, it got so really dry. Back to the dugout with it. nothing to show for that AB. All right, I'm not going to worry about hey, it. So, but I don't know. I like put some, find some slick stuff you can put on the windshield. Stepping I guess in, if it does, maybe it'll just kind of slide off. But. You ran the trucks. Yeah, I ran the door. Uh, 13. Dad ran in 2013. Team Y'all were teammates. First. Yep, for Brad, and I ran a 14 as well. So, so what is from that experience? What's your um, comfort level going into this race? Eh, not bad. I mean, I think it, <laughs> no one knows what to expect, right? I mean, you could have, you know, people have to be really struggling. And, and, uh, but I thought the trucks were pretty good, you know, just stop. different track and things like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I look forward to it. It's going to be fun. So just have He's to be. What else about the season you look forward to? It's nice to get a win out of the way early. That's for sure. You know, we never won this early before, so right that part's nice. But, you know, just, just going through the year. You know, I thought we did a great job. Sunday of, of working through what we needed to work through and you know as Todd and I get to know each other better 
you know, that just helps, you know, mm -hmm. time with somebody. And uh, Y'all made a big change. You're talking about, Todd, y'all made a change the year before last with crew mm -hmm. chiefs. Everybody the delivery, got – it's kind of like a – And there's the, a swing kind of and a mix. On, yeah. Everybody changed crew chiefs. In my mind, I like where you ended up, right? Strike yeah, three. Todd's great. I mean, so it was really the, the driver the moved with the, the whole team. So I, I got the whole – old 22 team wow. you know because last we got all my team and we really got brad's team so it was like driver and spotter move like, yeah. and everyone else thing would you tell me if one of those guys one of those drivers was thinking hmm, i don't like my, my thing my deal my deal <laughs> this wasn't good for me <laughs> i don't know i like mine so I, I, yeah. you know I, I don't i can't speak for those guys yeah. i mean obviously they ran great you know last year they Going, both of them were in the championship going, four. You know, both of them won multiple races. So, um, Your cars had the most speed in my opinion. Yeah, we just didn't really capitalize and things didn't work out. But, you know, hopefully you know, Todd and I sat down this offseason to figure out, all right, what did we do well that we can continue to do well or, or what do we really need to work on and, and pinpoint those things and apply them. And I think we've been doing a pretty decent job of applying them. Just have to keep going. So, well, man, um, you got to be enjoying watching him. Uh, succeed and probably has become bigger and better than your, your dreams ever imagined. No doubt. I'm, I'm proud of who he is. I mean, he's a good kid. Got his head on straight. As far as me looking at him, as talented and as fast as anybody in the Cup Series, it's just stacking experience on top to get there. There's one last thing I wanted to say. I uh, appreciate everything, your, your, your support of the Pittsburgh Medical Center uh, that I went to to get my head straightened out. Uh, you went through a similar experience, uh, and they helped you. But not only that, after the fact, you're actively supporting, uh, sharing people your story. That takes a lot of uh, bravery to say, hey, man, I had this problem. I went and got it fixed. If you, you know, Because it sends a lot of people in that right direction. Um, and you, I'm sure you're hearing stories about um, how sharing your own experience has helped others. Uh, but I really appreciate you doing that. It's been great to talk to you guys. Dave, I've thought the world of you for a really he's long time. You're an amazing dude. <laughs> you got a great son. And, a run uh, and he's got an amazing That's future. So we're just glad to have y'all's time. I know you've been, you got a busy week. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah. With that big win. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hey, do, do you remember a race? This is how good he is. You remember a race at Darlington, a cup race. Yeah. Everybody, oh, yeah. come, that wreck right at the end. Yes. So there's a big melee on the front straightaway, and we dive out of the way, and I dive down and through the infield up the track and smash right in the side. Yeah. <laughs> Just blew smoke him right out of the side. And the um, race is over. We're getting my car Rebels, ready, and I see here he comes strike. walking over. <laughs> and I, and he should be mad. And um, he just walks over, stands beside him. Good try, Dave. Walked off. <laughs> well, that was different than I expected. <laughs> I, mean, I don't even know. Is that an insult or is that like no, is that a compliment? No, is it? Is, uh, uh, good try. I mean, yeah, he did. I think he'd have done the same thing I did if I was if he was in that position. And yeah. it was just it was funny. Yeah. It wasn't what I expected. I admired you and always respected you even before we got to racing the week together. It was like uh, you know you were a, a legend coming to try to do try to make NASCAR work. At the same time, I was trying to make NASCAR work. So we were both kind of rookies yeah. in, a, in a sense yeah uh but you obviously were established to me in in, in another <laughs> discipline so it was pretty cool but um, I had the same thing happened with your dad a little bit oh, yeah. in 2000 yeah we were, we were rookies in cup 2000 so we were they took the first race we're out there in drafting practice and somehow i'm, I'm beside your dad and everybody's wiggling around and somehow my my left front touched his right and, um, it was no big deal. We yeah. all kept going. So two laps later, the left front goes down in the wall. Oh, no. So we're over there trying to work on my car and fix it, and here, here comes your dad walking over. Oh, I'm not sure how this is going to go. <laughs> he goes, says, Dave, you got to get off the track if there's contact in practice. I mean, he's just trying to tell me yeah. you can't stay out there. I'm like, I know. <laughs> and it was uh, – it was cool. I, I just never, I never, um, I don't know, I wasn't much of a talker. I didn't deal with that much as far as, you know, I wasn't a chit chat guy. Yeah, I know. I mean, you you shot, weren't a chit chat guy. Not at all. Yeah. I always like to Sometimes bug him on the driver's intro because you couldn't exactly run for him. Right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, one day your dad, I ran, um, it was in a bush race at Michigan. I'm pretty sure you won it. 
it was a race. Remember that race that Jeff Gordon came back with a Pepsi car? Yeah. And, um, I think I qualified on pole. Exactly you guys you took right off. And at one point during the race, I ran you down from a long way back. Like the uh, there was only one pit stop, I think, so in those races. I'm going to pit at 50. And um, I come out way behind and maybe finish there. But at the end of it, I'm getting out of getting out of my car on pit road. Your dad walks by and says, good job, Dave. Come on. Around. <laughs> yeah. There's another Dave here. <laughs> and that, was, that was awesome. Remaining. That is Anaheim yeah. leads by five. Uh, I knew him better. I did too. Yeah. I, uh, I wish I got to race him a little bit. More. Yeah. <laughs> um, the Angels have well, man, again, left. we appreciate it. Yeah. You guys are great. You're a great family. Keep going. Keep winning, buddy. Yeah, we'll try. We, we for enjoy watching this sir. Thank you, Dave. Ryan and Dave Blaney on the Dale Jr. Download. That one's hit high and deep and gone. A home run. Now a message from our partner, Fortnite. You heard it right. That's Fortnite. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Um, the new season of Fortnite is here if you play Fortnite. Or know anything about it, you'll know that the storyline evolves with every season, and it's better than ever. Whether you're playing Battle Royale daily, or maybe you're hopping in for just special events in Party Royale, the island changes with every development that gets thrown at us. So now the island has grown wild. So must you battle with wildlife and craft fouled, your weapons. Like Experience the Zero Crisis finale in game round. now and pick up the Season Six Battle Pass. To run wild across primitive landscapes with Laura Croft, Team Titans Raven, and Agent Jones. Go to fn.gg slash season six to see it all. Fastball for a strike. Great chance of the blast. It's finally time for the best part of the show. Ash Jr. brought to you by Xfinity, premier partner of NASCAR. How about we get Right into the questions that you sent at Xfinity Racing on Twitter. Yeah, so let's Just get these questions inside. going, see what you guys got on your on top of mind here. Our first question is coming from Higgy. Was there anything about the IMSA race at Sebring that caught you by surprise? Perhaps something uh, that you learned by covering these endurance races that you didn't see or notice while you were driving in the past? Well, I, you know, there's a 10-minute answer to that. But um, it's a... Uh, yeah, the race was really, the really night. good. And, um, you know, six. if you didn't watch it, you missed it. Uh, a pretty exciting race. For some reason, I really enjoy uh, the endurance races, calling the race, being part of the broadcast. You know, you're forced to kind of follow along with every moment. Every, you know, you don't, when we take breaks and step out of the booth, we still are watching the race and trying to, you know, stay on top of what's happening so that when we hop back in the booth after a couple hours of break, you feel like you, you, you're really aware of everything that's been going on and what everybody's uh, challenges are because throughout the race, every team faces some sort of obstacle, difficulty, it and um, it's react. just really fascinating to me. I, I've, uh, I got into broadcasting in, in my mind. I uh, was like, man, I'm just going to do NASCAR. It's all I want to do. I don't care about doing anything else. I don't want to climb up the broadcasting ladder and, and do anything beyond just NASCAR races, but um, yeah, my opinion about that has kind of changed a lot. Plus, uh, getting to work with Diffie down. and Calvin and, and um, Townsend uh, and the rest of the crew. You know, you meet a lot of different people uh, in the NBC family, the whether they're, you know, on-air talent or, or anybody in the production team. So it's great to make those connections and show people maybe what you're capable of so that he maybe next time they're the doing right a show, side. they want you to be there, want you to this be a part of it. So I get to learn from watching those guys. Diff is a, amazing, and his, he's, he's just kind of a jack-of-all-trades, can Cologne do anything. You put him in the booth and he Miller can run the show. With the just a lot of fun to get to know uh, uh, Calvin and Townsend. Townsend's hilarious. He's kind of sneaky, funny throws in some pretty funny one-liners throughout the race but um, I just love uh, learning more about IMSA learning more about what they're trying to do and who they're becoming you know they changed the sport uh, they changed a lot of the rules and uh, they kind of continue to evolve and, and do things to, that they can to try to improve the show and I think a lot of the things that well, I'll just say that we've we've covered two races, the 24-hour of Daytona and the 12-hour Sebring, and they've both been fantastic. Um, we had drama to the very, very finish 
of a 12-hour race at Sebring. It was crazy. There was a lot of things that were impressive, but obviously I think at the end for Sebastian Bourdais, the wing broke, and he lost a ton of rear downforce, and I guess, uh, or, yeah, and and so the the car became really, really challenging for him to drive, and he lost this really comfortable lead that he had, and so he had probably three or four cars within a couple seconds right on his tail, and in that moment, he, I don't, you know, I don't know if he recognized exactly what broke, but he made changes inside the car, uh, with the, uh, with the sway bars and whatnot and all the tools that he had.